the summer. We had that lovely weather and it was great for most of us, but it's been blamed for an awful lot of things. Lettuce shortages, uh, fizzy drinks makers running out of CO2. And now comes the news that the UK is dealing with more bed bugs and it's all the weather's fault. It seems that the warmer temperatures shorten the bed bug breeding cycle. So there are firstly more of them being born. And secondly, because we've been going out enjoying the weather, we have been carrying them from place to place. Cinemas, offices, public transport. And that's how they end up in our homes. Let's talk to a bed bug expert. He is David Kane, who is the managing director of Bed Bugs Limited, and he has been dealing with bed bugs for around 15 years, which uh, he reckons makes him the world's longest serving bed bug professional. Uh, great title, great thing to have on your CV. Morning. Good morning, Simon. Unusual job. <laughs> Very unusual. Um, firstly, explain what bed bugs are. Okay, bed bugs, or Cymex lectularius, as their Latin name is, are an exposure pest. We've lived alongside bed bugs since man lived in caves. Um, they're phenomenally adapted to to live in our beds, any place that we spend long periods of time stationary. They come out from hiding, they stick a needle in you, they remove a couple of microliters of blood, and they scurry back into hiding. OK, now when they do that needle thing and, and take in our blood, do we notice, do we feel pain, do we feel upset? Well, that's part of the, the crazy evolution of bedbugs. About 60% of people don't initially respond to the bites. So you can have a problem at home without showing any symptoms, being completely oblivious to it. And those are the people that have the advanced problems that are actually depositing it in the public spaces that others of us can pick it up from. OK, so this is, they live on us and we then go out to the pictures or we go out for a meal and then they drop off and then someone else comes and sits in our seat and they get the bed bugs too. Almost. Um, they live in our homes. If they're inadvertently or accidentally on you because they're looking for food and you leave the house, you can take them with you. Right. But their preference isn't to live on people. It's to live around places that people will be stationary. So beds, seats, um, airplanes, public transport, things like that. And I'm thinking when you, when you said about the people who perhaps don't know that they have a bed bug problem, that is just going to make the problem worse, isn't it? Because at some point you're going to get an infestation that you never realised was there. Absolutely. It's a little bit like someone being typhoid Mary with no symptoms, wandering around, inadvertently spreading the problem. Um, it's an easy way for us as society to try and fix it is to say, everyone, just stop. Have a think about bed bugs. I know it's unpleasant. Check your own homes. Consider using a passive monitor. And if you have a problem, do what you can to avoid spreading it to others. And are they dangerous, per se? Not really. I mean, they're not going to kill you. They don't have a, a detrimental health effect. They can have a huge psychological impact with mm. some people. And I've met some people who are very rational in normal life. And the concept of even a bed bug being mentioned is enough to make them run screaming for the hills. Wow. OK, <laughs> that's yeah. So it's, it's more to do with your mindset rather than the physical problems that they can cause you. But it, I mean, if you get an infestation, how do you deal with it? Well, if it's a small infestation and you do your research and you understand the problem, you can possibly fix it yourself. But if you're lifting your bed and finding there's a couple of thousand insects, you need to do your research and find the best help that you can get to bring in to fix the problem. OK, so it's, it's not a problem that is just going to go away. You need to deal with it. No, and you can make the problem worse by using aerosol insecticides, foggers, disposing of furniture. It's something you've just got to stop, get a grip of, and learn the lesson so it doesn't happen to you again. And, and do we all kind of have bed bugs? Is it likely that there might be a few of them around in every house? No, not at all. People often get them confused with dust mites, which are in all homes, but not everyone responds to them. Um, bed bugs... The, the normal condition is for your home not to have any, um, and obviously you may bring just one or two in, or if you bring in a, a second-hand item of furniture, you may bring a more significant number. So it, normally we don't expect to find them in homes, it's only when they're brought in by people. 
Well, it's been really interesting get it, getting your thoughts on all of this. And this is because of the exceptional summer. There are just more of them breeding. So it's not like we could kind of turn the heating down in the winter and, and live in the cold for a bit and kill them all off again. Absolutely. It doesn't get cold enough anywhere on planet Earth to kill bed bugs naturally. Um, this is something that we're all going to have to work together to, to find solutions. Brilliant. Well, nice to have your, your input on this. Thank you, David. Uh, that's Evie Kane, who is the Managing Director of Bed Bugs Limited, an expert on bed bugs. Um, what do you reckon? Have you ever had bed bugs? Have you had an infestation? I mentioned that my daughter uh, had them at one of her student flats. And it's exactly what David was saying. It was, it was to do with her mindset. She was, it made her feel itchy all the times, even when she necessarily didn't. Uh, but also, she kind of she didn't want to sleep. She was kind of, oh, where are they coming from? And they had to get people in and get them fumigated, and then it was all fine, a new mattress and all that kind of stuff. Have you ever been anywhere where there's been bed bugs? Uh, let us know. 0800 